Welcome back to Home Lab Networks. My name is AJ, and in today's video, I'm gonna go through these servers, try to show you guys what I self-host, and how I use these services in my day-to-day -day life. And excuse the mess, um, we have just got in a new kitten, so we've literally had to block every corner of the server rack, so the kitten doesn't get behind all these cords and get electrocuted. The okay, first things first is Piehole, the ad blocker, which is great because it blocks all my ads on my network that try to come through. And my main purpose for this one is for the kids as they play their iPads and their iPhones and whatnot, the apps, all, all the free ones that come with a shitload of ads and Piehole blocks them all, which is fantastic. So there's no playing the game for two seconds and then have to wait for an ad, Piehole blocks it all. If we go to queries blocked, you can see the different IP addresses from the different devices. These are the iPads and etc. And these are all ads from the games they are playing on their iPads. So that is, that is my main reason for Piehole. It's uh, mainly for the kids. So they can have a better experience on their iPads and not be interrupted as much. And it saves me having to pay for the apps. The other self host service I use on a regular basis is the AMP gaming, gaming server. So this hosts one of my Minecraft servers. So this hosts one of my kids Minecraft servers. AMP, it's pretty easy to use. I do prefer crafty controller to host Minecraft servers. But this um, does work. On the main Minecraft server, we run, run Crafty Controller, but I've also done a second server, Minecraft server, inside a virtual machine, just to have um, a second option for the kids with different, with different mods and different worlds. So this gets used on a day-to-day -day basis, which is helpful. So the kids can have fun, play around and muck around. And it's just easier to have this on a server instead of having all this data on your main machine and then your data fills up and you have to buy a new drive, etc. It's just easier to run on a server instead of on your main machine. Two of the main services that I use on a day-to-day -day basis on my main machine, on my second machine, which is my cloud gaming server, which I've been blasting all over my channel the last couple of months. So I'm very proud with how that project has turned out and I think I've proven that. So on this virtual machine on server two is the cloud gaming VM, which which is running Windows 10. Its only purpose is a gaming machine. So instead of all our games on our main machines, all through um, Steam, etc., we all put the games on this virtual machine here, and then we play the games through, um, on that through a streaming service like Moonlight. So now we're on onto the Minecraft server that's used. It's logged on to most days. So on this server, we host an application called Casa OS. From what I've seen online, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but apparently Casa OS is shut down at the moment, or they've closed it, and they've done a new version of this, but by a different name. But I've still got the original Casa OS, which runs Crafty Controller. All right, so Crafty Controller here runs off Casa OS. And this is like the main Minecraft server we have in the house that um, is taken seriously. There is two servers on here now. I've just created a, a second one that I put an old world on so we can expand on that world and make it make it as big as possible. Right, next on the list is my fourth server, which has a Linux distro installed live server. And then we've put on a self-hosted app application called Quacamole, which is um, a remote desktop server experience pretty much and so it allows me to log into all my different computers and services and devices on the home network all through guacamole and so we can log in with ssh rdp vnc etc and we can use it as if we'll use an actual machine so for an example we're going to log in to the pile server that we were on before so we're going to click onto this pile it's going to wait for a response and we're now we're in pile so we can run commands from this, updates, we can do anything all through that remote um, server experience. 
have an example will show you my Windows 11 virtual machine, which is which is on my main Proxmox server. Right, and now we're using a Windows 11 machine all in our browser. And as far as video playback goes and everything like that, it works great. The other service that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is my Synology NAS. So this is my one of my backup solutions for my home lab. So I've set this up so it connects to my Proxmox server, as you can see here. And I have it set so it backs up all my virtual machines. At the moment, it's once a month. But it will automatically back itself up once a month and back up all my, all my virtual machines. I do have this mounted on my, on my Windows machine. So I can just, can just copy this ISO file over straight on my Synology and just use it as a normal folder on my PC. But this is used on a day-to-day -day basis and it backs up all my virtual machines from all my servers that I've got running. And then my secondary backup is my Proxmox server backup, which is the server that's off at the moment. And that's, so I've got two types of backups. So in the event something that does happen, I've got all my data and backups right there ready to go. And last but not least, I use, um, this is called Heimdall. It's like a bookmark display for all your tabs and, and services. And that's pretty much what I use on a day-to-day -day basis, 24 seven. I obviously use a lot, a lot more than what I've shown, but as a 24 seven service, that's what I run on my home network. A lot of it is for the kids, as you can see, like Piehole, Minecraft, etc. But um, I said, I do a lot of testing. I try out a lot of new things, but these, what I've shown today, are the main services that run 24 seven in my home lab. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like rating, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you guys have any questions about the services that I self host or the, the equipment I run with in my server rack, leave it in the, in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.